Hello friends, good morning and welcome to this bright day. It's a bright day that we're supposed to have fun in life. So wherever you are, I am sending my greetings to you and uh, hope you enjoy your life. Don't let anything bother you. Don't let anything you know, bother you to the extent you begin to consider to make you know, wrong decisions for your life. Remember, it's your life. You have to live it. Whether you kill yourself now or not, you have, it's your life. Okay, so why are you taking your life when you have the strength to change it? Why are you, you know, taking other people's life? Why you can live better? You can live even without those people. Nobody is your problem and nobody is your solution. You are your problem and you are your solution. So whatever, whichever way you want to live, other people can assist you, whether good or bad. So I'm encouraging you to live your life and have fun. And then if you have the opportunity to talk to somebody that is considering uh, maybe, you know, calling it quit, encourage the person. You are an inspiration, all of us. We are here together. We are the higher force or the highest force you are talking about or people are talking about. So live humanly. There is power in humanity. All right? So today I will be sharing with us about, you know what, who knows God. That is what I want to share with us today. Who knows God? Please, if there is anybody that knows God and you are listening to me or you are watching, Feel free to, you know, show me God. I want to see God. I want to know God, too. So the, that's why I asked the question, who knows God? I, I asked that question uh, two days ago or yesterday on Facebook. Nobody responded. I said, who knows God? Both on my secular um, or marriage, <laughs> let me know you because I, I wanted to talk like Christians. Both on my marriage uh, group and um, my profile and some other group. Nobody responded because maybe some of them, I mean, many of them already know what I have been saying. So, but it's a question that supposed to provoke you to think. You know, that's what makes faith so irrational, so uh, faith and belief so irrational because they don't reason. They, they, when it comes to whatever they believe, they don't care about what fire says. They don't care about what truth says. All they care about is their doctrine. All they care about is their belief. So, but we're supposed to know if God exists, we're supposed to know Him. Whatever way, shape, or form you say, you say He's formless. We're supposed to know if God is formless. And the, 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 the only authentic proof of God's existence is God himself, not you speaking for him, not you talking about him. If you have case in a court, right, and it requires your presence, they don't say you are there, they believe by faith you are there. No. You have to be there present and talk for yourself. That's the authentic proof of God's existence. So but before I go there, I woke up this morning or oh, in the morning and uh, I share this um, with with us, which I believe myself communicated with me. And if people before we say I I had a revelation, the vo the Lord revealed this to me. No, myself. I said Africans who are ignorant of their true history and ancestors promote the lies of a creator of creator of or of one God, Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah. You save your Jesus, Virgin and Virgin Mary, forced on their ancestors and passed down to them by their oppressors. And I ask us to trust religion. Yeah, that is the main thing. When you are awake, when you depart from religion, you don't say, okay, let me just let them be. No, because you know, many people are still trapped in there. You have to trust religion. You are, like, you are trying to pull down the gates. You are trying to pull down the wall so that your people will come out. You know, they, they, they say, we, we tire. You will, no, people like me, we never tire. Especially when you are living in a place I'm living called America, United States of America, where you have steady power supply, so long you are paying your bill, and you have uh, data, you have internet connections, high speed running, You you nobody can stop you. So we are no longer in the dark 
in the dark age where you go from your house to church or from your house to where you're walking, then you go back. No information. Maybe you don't have a radio, you don't have television, or even when we have television and radio, it's only there you get the information. Now we have internet. And you can make your own radio, you can make your own television, people can listen to you, people can watch you. You see? So what the world is changing. But the only people that don't want the world to change are the religious people, which is why they are hanging on the books written many years ago, thousands of years ago. They're still hanging on that boot, uh, book. And they still believe in all those primitive stuff written there, which make no sense. Had it been the uh, natural fact facts recorded there, it will make sense because it will still be happening. But it's all folks, folklore, the, the, the presented as the truth begin to person personify some characters, some things there, and creating some fictional characters no one can prove. So, and Africans, because the present-day Africans didn't experience slavery, they didn't experience the evil that their ancestors experienced, you know, so they, don't, they, they think nobody forced them to become Christians or Muslims or Jews, no. You, uh, it's not your fault, but it's your fault now after hearing the truth about how your ancestors were forced to embrace those foreign evil religions. Then you have to make decision. Do you want to continue in that line or, cont or, or go back to the line of your ancestors before their destruction or before their deception or before they are being forced to accept that religion? The other thing I also share was this. I'll share it when I was at work. The, I, 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 it's about Bible contradictions. I said, Jesus said, I said to you, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But let's see what Jesus said in Luke 19, 27. The same Jesus. Now let's see what he said about, you know, also about enemies. He said, but... Bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. Now, it's Bible contradictions because the same Bible that tells us to love our enemies and um, do good to those who hate us. It also say about a king that people refused to, for, uh, refused to accept him as their king. Then after he gained the kingdom, he said, bring them here and slay them before me. Right? So, and you know Jesus is king of kings, right? And he's also king, your king of Israel, right? You believe all that. Okay, so, but what I want to bring out from these two places, Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, and Luke chapter 19, verse 27, is this. The people that told us to love our enemies and do good to those who hate us, they don't tolerate such act. act. They will kill those that, that they call their enemies. They will slay those that hate them. Think about it. You want me to mention them? Okay. Look at America. Look at um, UK. Look at other, other uh, uh, like all those people that say they are Christians, but they are not Africans. Look at their countries. If you touch them once, they touch you multiple times. They don't love their enemies, and they don't help those. They don't help. They don't do good to those who hate them. You can hear you can hear Donald Trump, right? How he talk about Muslims, the people they they see as their enemies. You know him building walls, right? So if love your enemies and do good to those who love who who who, who hate you, is true is truth, right? Those people that gave us the Bible are supposed to be applying it. See Vatican, Vatican build walls. Go and touch Vatican and see what will happen. They will destroy you. But these are people that are preaching, and Africans believe the lies. Instead of even verifying the whole thing, or at least pause and think, how can you tell me to love my enemies? If I love my enemies, that means I'm stupid. I am finished. My enemies will be preying on me. My enemies will be destroying me because I love my enemies. When you love, you show love, right? I am showing you love, and you are dealing with me. Or you are killing me. And our people used to say, Onyen tarabon obi, tarabon nanya. 
It means like somebody, your, your best friend betray you. you are, but you see that person as your friend, but that person was really your enemy, which is your frenemy. So that person was your enemy, but you are treating that person as a friend. Why that person is your enemy? It is only a fool that will treat his enemy as his friend or as his brother. Your enemy is your enemy, whether you like it or not. That's why you see many Africans still falling today, even in their villages, because they keep loving their enemies. They say, for Christ's sake, because of God, for peace's sake, for peace to reign. Then you see, they, they kill you. I don't buy that nonsense. If you don't want us to relate, then go your way, go my way. If you die, I'm not crying, I'm not coming. If I die, don't cry, don't come. Because when we are alive, that's when we're supposed to relate, not in death. But why is this that many Africans only relate uh, intimately in death? You see somebody that, that you are your brother or your kinsman, somebody that is related to you, but that person decided not to be talking to you anymore, not to be coming to your house. You are suffering. The person did not show up. You went through hell. You can't even go to that person's house because you know both of you are not in good terms. But the day you hear, that person died. Okay. You begin to do good to, okay, let me do, no. Because his family, whether it's his wife, his children, all of them knew. He stopped them from coming to your house. So they're supposed to be, at least in the secret, coming to tell you, you know. But they didn't do that. They were dancing around him. They were dancing to his tone. Then when the man died, then they come to you. They cry. They say, come, that's how many of us are still suffering and still perishing instead we now we are like we are like we're supposed to settle whatever's cause we have with each other as brothers and sisters as kinsmen as a people not we keep bearing 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 the grudges and separating ourselves then at death we come i don't want people to think i'm the one that excuse me that's what they think. They want to kill you. They kill you. They will be killed also. Nobody will live in this world forever. And let us stop being afraid of death. That is one of the major reasons we are suffering in Africa. Fear of death. Why people are not afraid of death? It is black people that are afraid of death. Black people don't want to die. But they want to go to heaven. Why people are ready to die? That's why they, you see they have military. They can go and kill for their countries. Africa go kill for their country? No way. So we're supposed to know that we should not love our enemies. We should do everything possible to bring our enemies to their knees so that they will ask for what? Forgive, they will ask for peace. That's what we're supposed to be doing, Africans. Stop all that nonsense, for God's sake, for peace's sake, for this nonsense, for that nonsense. If somebody declare himself or herself your enemy, keep it like that until that person come back and for settlement. If not, don't pretend, oh, I went to church today, my, 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 my pastor prophesied, or my prophet prophesied, that um, if you are bearing grudges here, it will hinder your progress. That's nonsense. If bearing grudges will hinder progress, America will not prosper. America and Russia, they are still at war today. They are still at war. Yeah, they are prospering. It's only in Africa, when you, are, when you don't greet somebody good morning, then it will hinder your progress. What, what is wrong with you? What concerns your brain with, with, uh, with what other people are doing? You have your brain to think, to go forward in life, to do something good for yourself, something better for yourself. You say, because I didn't go to somebody's house, things are not moving for me. Because I didn't do this, things are not... If things are not moving for you, working for you there, then relocate. You are not a tree planted by somebody that you cannot move. You can move. And that's why I'm in America, okay, so I keep, I keep moving. If America fall today, I will move, okay? So America is not my final destination, no, all right? So you should know that. But Africans, let us wake up. Let us stop loving our enemies. It's not doing us any good. It is stupidity for people to keep loving their enemies. We have to rise up, and that's how we will begin to think about uh, how we can restore our, our power and recover our heritage. Because our enemies are the one that taught us to, to, to despise our power and let go our our heritage, which they are still benefiting of today. I see that power coming back. We, were getting that, we are getting that power back, and we restore that 
our heritage. So let me go back to the business of the day about who knows God. Have you seen anybody that said they know God? Of course, many religious Africans, especially born again Christians or Christians, they say, I know the God I serve. I know God. I know the God I serve. Okay, which color is God? No, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And you say you know God? You say, I know God by my heart, in my heart. God is in my heart. I believe from, know, from knowing God, then to prove the, the knowledge of God that person has, he switch back to believe again. No, believe is the first step. Knowledge is the final step, which also is in progress. When you believe, you believe because you don't know. Did somebody tell you something exists? You believe. That is the first thing you're supposed to do as a rational being, as a human being. Okay, you tell me this, I believe. Then go the next step. Verify it. Prove it. Demonstrate it. You say that this thing is it or this person is it. I want to see that thing. I want to see that person. But when you ask to see that person and the person begin to tell you stories, kick the door. I want you to know, no, no believer in God knows God. Any, nobody that believes in God knows God. They don't. Every believer, none of them, no single one, regardless their status, regardless their position and their rank, whether in the Lord or in the God or in the gutter, whatever they call it. No believer in God knows God. No preacher of God knows God. No person that is preaching God knows God, no matter who that person is. Regardless their title, no preacher of God knows God. No teacher, no teacher of God or teacher of things of God knows God. None of them, none of them. No, no apostle, no prophet, no evangelist, no pastor, no teacher, no spiritual daddy, no spiritual mommy, none of them, no servant of God, no God, none of them, from beginning to their end. No follower of God knows God. You're supposed to know that also. You see people say, I'm following God. I'm following the word of God. Have you seen that God? No, I believe I've seen him in my faith. In, in, I believe God is real. I believe God in my, is real. Now, my co worker is sick. He calls out sick. He's a Nigerian. He's having terrible pain. You know, the pain that will cause somebody to call out in America, that's terrible pain. After taking pain pills and they're still going on. So I said to her, I was talking with him, and he started talking about God. He said, thank God. I said, I am the one you're supposed to thank, not God you cannot see. At least I'm the one that called you to check on you. God did not check on you. I am the one that checked up on you, not God. All right? So that's how we begin to talk about God. I said, the God you are talking about, you, don't, you have not seen God. You don't know God. He said, I feel, you know, you feel God in your heart. I said, no, you're done. So I use, I use many things to point out to him how it is not, you know, what he said. He said, no, you know, what you're saying is irrational. I said, irrational? Faith is irrational. Belief is irrational. There is no, you can't reason with faith. You can't reason with belief. Because when you reason, you are rational, right? That means you believe that God exists. The rational thing is this. You see that God. But if you believe that God you cannot see, although you say he's almighty, he can show himself, he can manifest himself, yet you cannot see this God, you cannot show this God. That's irrational. But you see how the believers are the ones that will turn to accuse you of not proving the non-existence of God, the believe you exist. I say, I don't have any belief. I don't have any faith. I have knowledge. I operate on knowing. I don't, I operate on knowledge. I don't operate in faith. I don't walk by faith. I walk by sight. If I tell you I have a green pen, you, you believe it? You say, where is the pen? Here is the pen. I have green pen. 
But if I tell you I have a green pen, you say, where is the pen? I said, what do you mean? You, you know, if you see any, any, anything, if, if you see this thing, it, it means there is pen. There is green pen. No, it's not green pen. And there cannot be green pen. You said you have green pen. That, that means that green pen exists. If, if that green pen exists, why are, why are you struggling to show it? Why is it too hard for you to show it? I want you to know this. The final proving fact you can show for anything or for anyone you believe or you claim to know or you claim to exist. The place you claim you have met this person. The only proving fact you can show to every rational person, to every wise person is this. Come and see. For example, you went somewhere and you see people talking about a man being married. You say you have a wife. They say, no, you don't look like you have a wife. If you have a wife, you don't, you won't look like that because maybe they believe a, a married man don't look happy or don't do happy stuff or all that. You know, you must be going through some nonsense or that. Come and see. They say, no, we are. say, come and see. That is the only final proving fact. You can run around everywhere telling me, God, if you see the cloud, it means God, somebody created it, somebody put it there, somebody put this, somebody put the air, somebody put the grass, somebody made this to happen. Now. <laughs> come and see. Is the final proof. As a fact, you can show that you know what you are saying. It is not hearsay. It's not what I saw in my dream. It's not what I saw in the vision. It's not what I saw or somebody prophesied to me. No, it's come and see. And since you believe in the Bible, right? Now, I wish use the Bible to show you what it means to prove your faith. Because if you have faith, you have to demonstrate it. You have to prove it. Faith is not worse. Remember, in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 3, it says, By faith we understand. You hear what they said? By faith we understand that the walls we are framed by the word of God. It is not by faith they understand anything. They don't understand anything about world. They only read it in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Is there any faith there? No. It is written in the Bible. So it's not a proof. It's a claim. Faith is a claim. Belief is a claim. They cannot be proofs. The Bible is not proof. The Bible is not the source of any truth. The Quran is not the source of any truth. The Torah is not the source of any truth. It's claimed that people, people like you pen those words down. You can also do better than them. Because they were writing without thinking about future. They're supposed to be proactive. Know that time will come when people will question all this. Even if you wrote it for the slaves, you wrote it to control the slaves, the one day the slaves will be... But these people don't know that there will be time when people, the slaves will be free. They thought these people will be slaves for life. But they don't know. No matter how, how, how long lie, the lie reign, one day the truth will surface, and when truth comes, truth prevails, as it's prevailing today. So let me use the Bible to show you, I'm not saying to prove myself, no, to show you that you have to prove what you believe. Come and see. If you tell me something exists or somebody exists, they, I say I'm doubting it. All you have to do, not to begin to curse me, not to begin to quote Bible or Quran or Torah, no. Not to begin to quote any person, because some people, or some of you are following people. Oh, that person is a great preacher. He's a great teacher. You know what? No. That some, even myself, you're not supposed to follow me. We are supposed to be brothers and sisters. I'm not your mentor. I'm not your teacher. We are in this together. I learn from you. You learn from me. That's why daily I share my own posts. I share other people's posts. But whatever I share, I can defend it because I have to read it. I don't just share for, okay, I see this on Facebook, I put it. No. I read it and I share it and I can make a lot of many posts from one thing I read from somebody. 
Psalm chapter 66. <laughs> it's your Bible that will show you it's supposed to prove what you believe. It's supposed to demonstrate your faith. All that you have faith in Abraham, you have to prove it. He said, by faith in Christ, have you seen Jesus? So you have to, for you to be a child of Abraham, you cannot be a child of Abraham by faith. It's supposed to be by blood. That is what you know. So that is a, by Jesus, by Christ, we did it. You haven't seen Christ, you haven't seen Abraham, because none of them has ever existed. Psalm 66, as you call it, the word of God, right? Okay, let's see now how... What the word of God say. <laughs> uh, and you know, you don't come with me with all that uh, interpretation, no. Bible don't need our interpretation. Just read it and see. You know, as our people say. <laughs> Psalm 66. Mm. You see, like now I do. <clears throat> if, if I was still a Christian preacher, I would begin to speak in tongues. <clears throat> Most Sunday, Psalm 66. <laughs> man, Christianity is for is for is funny, man. I used to do that nonsense. Now, Psalm 66, verse 5, to show you that you're supposed to prove whatever you're saying about God, whatever you're saying about Jesus, you're supposed to prove it. You're supposed to demonstrate it. Somebody tells, said to me yesterday, he don't have to prove anything to anyone. Then I say, shut up. Stop talking about it. If you cannot prove your faith, don't say it. Why are you preaching what you cannot prove? Why are you saying what you cannot prove? Why are you posting what you cannot prove? You can post it as a question maybe to learn or to hear from other people. I do that also sometimes. But when you say you know something, you're supposed to prove it. Somebody asks you, say, it's a spiritual thing, or you don't have spiritual eyes, or God open your spiritual understanding. Nonsense. Quit God. You are the one that writes it. Explain it. If you give us details, it will be easier for us to understand it. But telling me spirituality, I tell them, African spirituality and the foreign religion, they are the same thing. As spirituality destroy our ancestors also. We, we take our power and we are scribing it to one higher power. I believe there is God somewhere. There is higher power that is higher than me. All of us are higher than one person. I've been saying that. All of us put together. We are the highest power over one person. All of us. We have the almighty power. Uh, 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 more than one of us. With men, all things are possible, not with one person. There is no almighty God. There is no almighty human being. It is all of us. When we come together, we form that almighty power. We can do all things. That's what is written in your Bible. Genesis chapter 11 says, What these people imagine to do, nothing will stop them. That power you are ascribing to one God, Amadioha, Chineke, Chikotkabiyama, Jehovah, Allah. Nonsense. It is human power. Those gods, they cannot do nothing without you. That you don't understand something does not mean it is God. That's why you see our people, we call white people spirits. Oh, you bought Barbara. Who told you? Because they invented something. The thing you thought you cannot invent. But, and the people that invented those things you are ascribing to, what, we are your brothers, we are African brothers that we are taking from us as slaves. You see the doctors in Africa, what are they doing? Not, but you see the doctors in America or in India, black people, they are doing great things. Why is that in Africa? It's like the cloud is over their mind. Some people say, oh, because you're in America. Say, no, when I was in Nigeria, the, if you know me, I have been on transition. It was in Nigeria I stopped going to church, not in America. Although, when I came to America, I said, say, let me go to church. I was even giving donations to all these people in radio, like Family family Radio, uh, St. Jude Hospital. But when I see the politics going on in America, I say, no, I'm not giving them any dime. When I see politicians making campaign with millions of dollars, and yet you will ask me to contribute $1 every month or $20 every month. For what? He said to help the residents to do What of the money they are using to do campaign? The money that government have. Well, what are about them? No. I say nowhere. Psalm chapter 66, verse 5, he said, Come and see the work of God 
not believe. Not believe the word. He said, come and see. It's not something you imagine. He did not say, come and imagine. Come and pray. Come and prophesy. Come and think. No, he said, come and see the works of God. He said, hear what? He said, he is awesome in his doing towards the sons of men. Psalm chapter 66 verse 5 is the word of of God to those that believe in the Bible and hear what he says come and see the works of God you have to see it he said because he is awesome in his doing towards the sons of men I ask you where is the works of God today where is God awesome in doing anything towards the sons of men his believers has been slaughtered everywhere, especially in Nigeria. You see believers in God suffering everywhere, in your village. Even in your very family, that's you and myself. My siblings are suffering. My parents are suffering. Your own siblings and parents are suffering. You are in abroad making money and sending back home. That is evidence of poverty, evidence of suffering. And these people you are sending that money to, they believe in this almighty God. He said, come and see the works of God. Not believe in the works of God. He said, come and see it. And you know, church used to use this to rob people. He said, come and see the, the miracle of God. Come and see the work of God in our church. You went to the church. Did you see any work of God there? So they, when they find that people are not seeing it, they begin to perform it. They pay people to perform. They pay people to say, I, I was, I was, I was imbecile. They, uh, I came out, the man of God, uh, uh, I say, they say wrong, wrong go there, wrong come there. And you believe they are following Jesus. Did Jesus tell anybody wrong go there and wrong come back? <laughs> if Jesus hear you walk normally, you go. And you find out those things are lie. He said, come and see the works of God because he's awesome in his doings towards the sons of men. Not in their dream, not in their imagination, towards the sons of men. Not believers, not unbelievers, towards the sons of men. Oh no. You know that place in Psalm 107, oh, I used to sing it a lot. That was one of my, oh, that, that was one of my favorite songs as a minister of the gospel. Oh, that man will praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful, wonderful words to the children of men. He has broken down the gates of hell. Oh man, you know how we sing it. But it's a lie. He said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their death. Where has that happened? You see Christians hospitalized today in hospitals. The guy I'm telling you, he's in pain. He said he believed in God. I said, okay, where is God to hear your pain? He said, God will do that. God will do that. You call out. God will do that. Tomorrow you are going to see a therapist. God will do that. God is not doing a thing, but they make you believe God is working. Why he's not working? You say, oh, our ancestors were worshipping idols. They were worshipping the trees. They were worshipping the sun. They were worshipping the stones. Okay. Pause. Let us reason together. And so what? So if our ancestors were worshipping the sun, the trees, and the stones, that makes them bad people? No. That makes them reasonable, reasonable people. That's why I say, is our ancestors not wiser than us? You say they worship the sun. Of course, the sun, without the sun, you won't exist. Without the sun, sun is the most high. Is there anything higher than the sun? Is there anything higher than the sun? I want to, because all this thing, we keep running away from name calling. People calling us, I don't try, I don't. Yo, you, are, you are worshipping the sun. Nonsense. Christians are still worshipping the sun till today. That's why you worship on Sundays. And when you see the pictures of Jesus, they put the sun disc around, around his head. Because he's the son, they changed the son of God and they made him the son, S-O-N of God, which is not. He never existed. So if our ancestors were worshipping the son, what is wrong with that? I want you to tell me. What is wrong with that? 
You say son is a creature. Who told you that? Son is not a creature. Son gives life both to you and to animals, to plant. Son, without sun, you will not operate. Without sun, you will, have, will not have the moon shining in the night. Sun gives light. And you need light. That's why they tell you Jesus is the light. For where? Where is Jesus is the light when you don't have light in, in, in Africa? You are living in darkness. Where is Jesus the light when, if you don't pay your bills, you have PAC and G come and cut. Uh, they don't have to come. They stay in the office and boom, blow you. You will not have light. They told you that lie and you believe it. And you are against your ancestor for worshiping. I rather worship the sun than worship an invisible God. I cannot hear his voice. I cannot see anything of him. Psalm 66 verse 5 say, come and see. Not come and worship. Not come and believe. It's, you have to see it. You say, oh, they, our ancestors were worshipping the trees. Of course, it's better to worship the tree than to worship an invisible God you cannot see. Trees have lives and trees can give you fruit. You can, you, tree can give you wood to cook your food. Tree can give you shelter. It can give you shed. Many things you can benefit from. You can make money from tree also. What can you make from God? Nothing. The God you say is almighty, the invisible God is useless to you. So when you are accusing our ancestors, you are accusing them because you are irrational. You don't think. Whatever you believe they were, or they, they weren't worshipping those things actually, but you believe they were worshipping them. But let us, ask, let us say, they, let, let me agree, they worship them. They are still wiser than you who is worshipping the God your enemies gave to you. Their enemies did not force them to worship any sun or any tree. But your enemies worship you to worship God, Jehovah, Yahweh, Allah, Jesus. You are worshiping them while you cannot see them. At least you worship tree, you see the tree. When the tree falls, you can still use it to do many things. Okay, you say our ancestors were worshiping stones. Guess what? Our ancestors were the first to build house with stones, not white people. Our ancestors know the power of stone. Stone, you can use stone to make many things. Anything that lasts is made of stone. Even the things you made of iron, it doesn't like iron rot. But stone is with the nature. It's, you know, the stone also grows. It also goes back. You, you accuse your ancestors because of the foreign religion you embraced. Stop it. God can never benefit you, but the sun will benefit you always, whether you believe in it or not. The trees will benefit you always, whether you believe in them or not. The stones will benefit you always, whether you believe in them or not. But you are God. If you don't believe in them, you go to hellfire. As a That's chineki in Efe. It's time you trash that, those gods that you are enemies gave to you. Psalm 66 verse 5, since you believe in it, it says, come and see the works of God. I want to see the works of God in your life. You say you believe God is my God, is, the, is your healer. Okay, so what are you doing with that doctor? What are you doing in that hospital? I want to see. He said, come and see. Now that was Old Testament. So you may say, oh, that's the Old Testament. You know, things are changed. God sent Jesus. Okay. Let us see about Jesus. John chapter 1. Remember, showing us come and see. You have to demonstrate. You have to prove your faith or your belief. It's not what you just say. And thinking all of us are morons like you to accept it. No. So, Psalm, John chapter 1, 43 to 46 and 49. Psalm, I don't know why I keep saying Psalm because I read it before, but it's John chapter 1 from verse 3, say, from verse 43, John chapter 1, 43. He said, the following day Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and they found Philip and said to him, follow me. Not in dream, not in vision, it was in physical. Jesus said to Philip, follow me. Verse 44, now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and, and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and, and said to Nathanael, We have found him of whom Moses in the law. Remember, he was quoting the law, right? Say, so we have found. We don't just believe it. We found. So whatever you believe in the Bible, you have to find it. 
You believe Jesus existed in the Bible? You have to find Jesus today. You have to see Jesus. <laughs> we have found him of whom? We have found him. Oh. Ah, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets who wrote Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of, Nathan, uh, uh, out of Nazareth? You see, it's reason. Nathanael was reasoning with him. All right? So Philip did not go and tell him, Nathaniel, I just tell you we have found him. Are you saying we are uh, we are liars? Are you saying I don't know what I'm saying? You know, you let the let, let, let the Holy Spirit open your eyes so you can see what I'm saying. Oh, you cannot see because I am unbeliever. Oh, you are spiritually blind. That's why no. Philip said to him, Come and see. That's all it takes. It's not theory. It's not uh, just opening your mouth and begin to claim some nonsense, vomiting things that is in your head. No, I don't care about what is in your head. I want to see that thing you say you believe. Say, come and see. See, when, when Nathaniel saw Jesus in verse, five, verse 49, after having a conversation with Jesus, Nathaniel answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Remember, Philip told him that Jesus was the son of Joseph. But now, Nathaniel have met Jesus, have conversation with Jesus face to face, not in the dream. And Nathaniel said, Jesus, you are Rabbi, the son of God. You are the king of Israel. When you know, you will speak better. Not quoting people. Well, Nathaniel did not say, Jesus, you are the son of Joseph. No. Philip told him, Jesus is the son of Joseph. When Nathaniel came to Jesus, not an encounter, not a spiritual encounter, not a religious encounter, not a revelation encounter. No. When, when Nathaniel met Jesus, after Philip said, come and see, then he saw Jesus, had conversation with Jesus. Then he began to say what he think himself by himself, what he found out by himself, not what pastors say, not what apostles say, not what bishops say, not what the Bible say, not what the law say, not what the Moses say, but what he himself found out. He said, you are a rabbi. You are the son of God, the king of Israel. When you see that whatever people tell you, you, you will not doubt. You say people are doubting what you are preaching because you are just preaching. People are doubting what you are teaching because you are just teaching. If you can demonstrate what you are preaching, if you can demonstrate what you are teaching, if you can prove your faith and your belief, people will not doubt you. You say you have the power of God, you can heal the sick. Why is there any hospital still functioning around you? You build mega church and you say, they say you are an anointed man of God. You have power to heal. There should be no hospital in that state, at least in that state. I mean, I'm living in, in, in New Jersey and you say you have power to heal, the power of God to heal. There should be no hospital in New Jersey. Or those of you living in whatever state you are living in, like in Nigeria, you are living in Anambra state or in Lagos state. If there is any one person that says he's anointed man of God in Lagos, there should be no hospital working in Lagos because he will be healing everybody. But because it's an organized religion, organized, designed to deceive you, to destroy you, they tell you, no, come in the presence of the Lord. You have to become their member. You have to bring your tithes and offering. Where have you seen the Jesus, the Son of God you believe exists? They have been telling you, come and see Jesus in our church. You went there, you end up seeing a man dressed in suit and use sweet mouth to rob you your money. Telling you to sow seed for God to bless you in Jesus' name. You say he's a man of God. He's a crook. He's a criminal. They ask 
force you to come and see God in the church, in the temple. You went there, you did not see any Jesus. They tell you, believe Jesus is here. Jesus is here right now. He's here. You know the song they sing when they want to perform their miracle. He's here to hear the sick and to have a nonsense. He's not there. If Jesus is there, you will see Jesus with your kuro kuro eyes, face to face, as you can see me. Jesus is not a spirit. Jesus himself in the Bible said he's a, his flesh and bones, like you and I. Luke chapter 24, 36 to 44. Jesus is not a spirit. Stop suggesting that Jesus is a spirit. Stop believing that Jesus is a spirit. Jesus is a person like you and me. He's the son of man. <laughs> oh, now that's that one. All right? So still remain in St. John chapter 1. I will show you another come and see. You have to prove your faith. Now verse 35 to 39. Let's go up there. 35 to 39. Again, okay. <laughs> the next day, John stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus, not in dream, not in revelation, not in vision, looking at Jesus face to face with natural eyes, is not spiritual eyes, natural eyes. John looking at Jesus. As he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. So what was the message of John? Behold the word, the, the Lamb of God. That is message of faith. That is message of belief. He was not a lamb. He was a human being like them, but he said he's a Lamb of God. Okay. They hear him. They heard him, I mean. They hear what he says. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Okay. They followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? Are you seeking for miracle? Are you seeking for money? What are you seeking? <laughs> what do you seek? Some of you will say, I'm seeking, I'm looking for husband, I'm looking for wife, I'm looking for car, I'm looking for money, I want to be this, I want to be that, I'm looking for that position, I'm looking for a job. Like, God cannot give you all those things. Jesus will never give you all those things. Going to church will never give you all those things. Going to temple will never give you all those things. Praying to God will never give you all those things. You are the one that have the power to go and walk them out. They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated teacher, where are you staying? We want relationship. We want to be with you. We want to dine with you. We want to follow you. Not just believing. Okay. Verse 39. Jesus said to them, <laughs> Come and see. Come and see. Don't tell me just believe. Don't tell me go and research. Come and see. If you're talking about your faith, tell me, show me that faith. Show me your faith. I think it's in your Bible. Show me your faith. I will show you my works. I will show you my own faith by my works. Okay. So if you have faith, I want to see it. You have faith that God can heal the sick and you are sick. Let God heal you. You don't supposed to go to the work there is in Jesus' name be healed. Then you heal. That is the work of faith. That is the result of faith. Faith without works. Faith without result. Faith without proof is dead. <laughs> it's in your Bible. Jesus said to them, come and see. They came and saw. Jesus did not say come and see and they just go around living. No. Jesus said to them, come and see. And the Bible said, they came and saw where he was staying. And what remained with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour. Jesus said to these disciples of John, who had the message of John, and decided to follow the Lamb of God. They no longer follow the, want to follow the voice that is telling them about this Lamb. 
about this son of God, about this Jesus. They say they want to follow Jesus, the written, the main thing. They follow the, the Jesus, ask them, what are you seeking? He said, we want to know where you are staying. So, does this also contradict Jesus somehow? Jesus said he had nowhere to lay his head, but he showed them where he was staying. Is that Bible contradiction? I think it is. I will post it. <laughs> Jesus said, foxes have hole, bears have nests, but him, the Son of Man, have nowhere to stay, to lay his head. But here, he said that he told his disciples, come and see where I'm staying. And the Bible said, they saw. They came, they saw. And they remained. They came, they saw, and they remained. When you verify your belief, people will stick with that. You cannot verify it. That's why you see Christians jumping from one church to another. They cannot stay one place. You see people jumping from one religion to another. They can, because you cannot prove faith. They are still looking for results. They are still looking for proof. He said, oh, that man of God is great. They rush there. Maybe after they find out it's not true, or maybe when that man of God died, they look for another person. Another person comes. Come and see. They came and saw. And remain. Not in their dream, but in reality. Come and see. It's not, you don't tell somebody in the natural, come and see spiritual work. That's why when that person keeps or people, anyone that tell me that, that spirituality, I say, then get out of this natural world and go to the spiritual world. We don't need spirituality in the, in the natural world. What we need in the natural world is our brain, our common sense. We already have it. We're supposed to put them to work. That's how we build ourselves. That's how we build our nation. That's how we build our land. That's how we become a great people. People that don't use their brain are slaves. Slaves don't have their don't have their own say. They follow what the master say. The last time they invited you to that their church, they say, "Come and see God. Come and see Jesus." Did you see God? Did you see Jesus there? But they manipulated you, convinced you to believe He's there, and you you, you keep going by yourself now. You believe it's there. You believe it's there. I'm going to church. Let me close my shop. I'm going to. Your shop is better than church. Your shop will feed you. Church cannot feed you. You will find it. You find out when you lo when you lose your your shop. You will see how your church will begin to treat you. You will no longer become a financial member. You become maybe they make you usher or you begin to sweep the church. <laughs> you, you know you lost your church, your your shop. And especially when they want to give you money to start business again. You know, you are what you will go through. Oh, no. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you are talking about your faith in God, God does not supposed to be a feeling. God supposed to be real. It's not feeling, my people. Feeling does not matter. It is facts that matter. Your feelings comes and goes. It changes. It does not stay. But fast remain the same. The sun will always shine. You cannot stop it. Night and day will always be. You can. That's why they lie to you. They tell you the world is coming to an end. End time. All that nonsense. They know that it's, it can never happen. Because the world has been in existence millions. Uncountable time. Uh, uncountable years. Now, because you came up with idea of religion, idea of God you cannot prove, and you said, okay, you know what, the world will end. Just to prove your faith. That's why the, it's when you die, that's when you will see their God. You cannot see their God while you are alive. And when you die, you don't know nothing. You don't know all that. After life, I will be doing, what, what is that? You don't know anything. It's a spiritual thing. You don't know nothing about spiritual things. You made it up. It's a natural thing that they spiritualize because they don't understand it. What they don't understand, they say is a mystery. I want you to know this. You said God is a spirit. Who told you that? Who told you God is a spirit? Who told you? Have you ever asked yourself, who told me God is a spirit? It's your fellow human being that told God. There's no God that ever tell you that he's a spirit. 
You read it in the Bible. God is a spirit or in the Quran or whatever. A man told you that or pastor told you that or one rabbi tell you that or one person that is preaching God tell you God is a spirit, you believe. How do that person know God is a spirit? You cannot see spirit, but you say that spirit exists. That spirit cannot show himself to everyone. Because and especially when you say he created everyone. Let me ask you, what if God is the Son? What if the Son is God? The God you said exists, what of the Son is the, that God? What will you do? Have you ever think, uh, think about that? You can see the Son. Can you see God? No. And in your Bible, you said the Lord, God is a Son and a shield. Because they stole from our ancestors who have that concept of son being the most high they begin they created him and say you Yahweh is the most high the Lord God is the most high which most high especially all these Jamaicans or people that say they believe in Rastafarians say most high ja, most which most high ja? the weed you smoke is the most high ja. <laughs> what if God is the son what if God is the darkness? The darkness, you say, no, darkness. Uh, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, you are agent of darkness. You call him agent of darkness. Your Bible, your God said is the one that created darkness. Like begets like. If God created darkness, God is darkness. It's in your Bible. Read it. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 7. In conclusion... I want you to also consider this. It's common sense. You're supposed to know that you believe what you don't know. It's not, there's nothing wrong in believing what you don't know. But it becomes wrong when you are defending it. If you must defend what you know, you have to prove it. You have to show it. Tell people, come and see, and you show them. Not come and see and say, wait, wait, wait. After you die, you will see. Or one day you will know. Mm -mm. Come and see. Right there. They're supposed to see it. You cannot prove what you believe. You cannot. No matter how you try. That's why you see believers, when you are when you engage them in, in argument about their belief, they will end up calling you names. And when you call them back, they begin to say, you know me, they, if you, they, they, I'll, I'll be following, I'll be contributing then until you make one negative statement against me you know, when you refuse when you fail to prove to me what I'm asking you then I will show you that I have a lot more than you I will call you more names <laughs> that you <laughs> you can only prove what you know let that sink in you can only prove what you know you cannot say I can hit, I can I can I can fix a car by faith. No. You have to know how to fix car. You cannot say I'm a doctor by faith. I'm a doctor by faith and they hire you in any hospital or you open hospital. You know they will they will put you in jail. It is only what you know that you can prove. You cannot prove what you don't know. You cannot prove what you believe. You have to know it to, believe, to prove it. For example, you don't believe in your parents or in your children. You know them. You don't say, I believe I have parents. No. I know I have parents. That's why I'm here. Are you getting it? I want you to understand the, the difference between faith and knowledge. Belief and fact. The fact is this. I know my parents. I know my children if I have them. I don't believe my parents. I don't believe my parents exist. I know they exist. I don't believe my children exist. I know my children exist. Yeah, you see, you see how it is? You don't believe them because you know them. The moment you know, belief ends. The moment you have knowledge, faith ends. You have faith because you don't have knowledge. You believe because you don't know. It is that simple. When you know, you can demonstrate it very easy. 
if you have electric problem in your house or electrical problem, I mean electrical problem, right? You call an electrician. Some you are you are person everywhere about. You know you don't know how to fix it. You think electrician will just come and say, okay, where is the problem? You show him. Okay, he say no problem. No, it's nothing. Don't worry. <laughs> you boom. It start working. That does not make him Almighty God. Okay, he's just somebody like you, but he has he has knowledge you don't have. And that does not make that electrician better than you or greater than you. Stop respecting people. I mean, stop, stop treating people as if they are higher than you because of their status in life. You see a doctor, you begin to behave like a goat. You see an engineer, you see a lawyer, you see the pre a president, a governor. You think they are greater than you. They are not. But they like it that way because that's how they exercise their authority. Instead of compassion. The truth is this, you cannot know who you have not seen, so you cannot know God. Who knows God? No one. Why? Because God does not exist. I mean, the almighty, invisible God, they said, created the whole world, does not exist. Which is why they told you, it is after death that you will see God. That's nonsense aren't nonsense. It's irrational. Telling somebody you will not know God, you will not see God until after death. Telling somebody the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God will reveal God to you is crap. Now, you're supposed to say, come and see. And when they come, they see. If they don't see, stop convince, confusing them with faith. Stop confusing them with the Holy Spirit. You will see, you will see. No, you will you won't. So thank you, my family and friends. And this is what I want to share with you. Think. Use your tongue to count your teeth. I don't ask you to break them out and begin to count them. No, at least you can do that one. You have your tongue, begin to count your teeth. <laughs> so have fun wherever you are, as I said in the beginning. And please, if you believe in anything or in anyone, prove the existence. If you prove them, you have what is called knowledge. And you know what? Knowledge is the greatest. Thank you. Peace.